So I have with me the Empress herself, a Genesis Samadhi. This woman is the personification of Earth. She is motherhood personified, the beginning with no end. She rocks many titles, including mother, poet, tantrika, doula, and speaker. I'm so excited to talk to her about higher consciousness, tantra, and entrepreneurship. Hey, sis, welcome to my show. Greetings, Ariel. Thank you for having me. So I've had the pleasure of knowing you for a few years now. And what has always struck me is your energy. You have like the most grounded energy. And when I'm around you, I can't even help but feel grounded myself. And so what does this groundedness kind of bring to your work as a coach, doula, tantrika, et cetera? Um, I would have to say um, it's a rooting element that I have. Um, I'm very connected to the earth, which means I'm connected to other people. Um, I'm a natural empath. So just kind of being in your presence and being around you, um, I'm able to pick up on people's energy, pick up on, you know, their, their gifts, their insecurities, their, you know, just kind of where they are naturally. And then my spirit recognizes that and I just kind of reflect back to them who they are, I guess, to a degree. Um, I've always been that way. Ever since I was a little girl, I was always the root element to my family. Um, I went to school for psychology. Um, so it's just always kind of been a part of who I am. Um, Earth sign, um, rising Virgo and sun Virgo. Um, so I'm very self, kind of like a cat. Whenever I go into a situation, I'm very observant. I'm very watchful. I just kind of allow myself to attune to the channel, you know, the frequency that I'm in before I make a move. And I think that that has been the guiding light for me throughout my life. And that's what allows me to easily assist others that I connect with them. Love it. And so can you explain to everyone kind of what it is exactly that you do as a coach, as a doula and as a tantrika? Um, It's kind of all under one umbrella. I started out um, my root actually is a spoken word artist. Um, And I think that that is what gave me the platform to speak and do the lectures and the workshops that I do. Um, Very early on, I began to study crystals and herbs um, in the naturopathic way. And in doing so, um, I was very interested in becoming a holistic doula. I thought that the metamorphosis of birth is an amazing thing and I wanted to know more about it. With a lot of my clients, I started to realize they weren't happy in their relationships. They weren't happy with the mate that they were pregnant by or the father wasn't present at all. And it made me back up and say, whoa, you know, how did you get to this point? Who who did you get pregnant by? Um, Which led into my works and studies in Tantra and conscious creation and Um, compatibility of partners and how that affects the sojourn of the child's life that comes through. And I wanted to start doing um, astrology compatibility, um, blood type compatibility, historical compatibility of couples, if possible, before they got pregnant. Um, And if they were already pregnant, then helping them understand the blueprint astrologically of each one of them so that they could have an easier journey together and be a step ahead of parenthood with their child. So that's how the Tantra and the doula work tied in together. Um, And then again, astrology ties in because I'm always looking at the blueprint of who you are, how did you get here? What is your sexual personality inherently? And then going in and finding what traumas have brought you to the person that you are now that has affected your sexuality so we can clear that up and cleanse that out. Um, so that you can start to paint the canvas of your new life of who you really choose to be. So let's dive a bit deeper into into that. I'm specifically talking about um, that journey kind of for couples into parenthood. And so how would you say, or give us an example of how two individuals' blueprints when they come together affects kind of how the child comes into the world and in their individual journey? 
Well, say you have, um, I'll take, I always use my parents as an example. My father was a Leo. My mother was a Scorpio. If you know anything about astrology, as soon as you hear those two signs together, you're like, oh, wow. They should have been a passionate love affair, not necessarily a married couple, right? But being that they were, um, and then having a Virgo child, which was me, and me being very Pass, not passive, but grounded and um, more cautious and reserved and practical. I'm looking at both of them like y'all are crazy. Like, you know, you're all over the place. Um, and I think that the blueprint of the parents, we have to learn one another. First, we have to learn the person that we're involved with, right? So there's certain traits um, of a person that they have naturally that come with their blueprint. It comes with when they were born. They may be stubborn, they may be passive, um, they may be an introvert and you have to be able to work through those things and not always take them so personal, but know how to work around them and when to fall back and allow the person to just be. That's part of um, being comfortable and compromising in a relationship, truly knowing your partner and knowing you know, where their weaknesses are, where you can step in and help or knowing where their strengths are, where you can fall back and receive assistance. Um, or when it's time to nurture or when it's time to lead. I think that a lot of times we take things so personal when we don't have this information from a person and it, it, and it makes us struggle and it makes us go back and forth a lot of times when there's no need to. And then that carries into when you have a child, if you have a child who isn't necessarily astrologically compatible with you, you may have struggles in parenting. You may have a very quiet child who's not outspoken, who doesn't move when you ask them to move, and it may irritate you, right? But if you learn who the child is, you can learn techniques and mechanisms to work with the child so you're not so flustered or not thinking that the child is just being disobedient or not responding to you the way you want them to. You learn that that's the nature of the person. So I like to call it, you know, an a la carte of parenting. When I can catch two people before they ever get pregnant, and show them when is the most ideal astrological time for them to get pregnant, that the child can be more compatible with the both of them. It will make parenting a lot easier for them, and it will give the child a better chance at developing into who they're supposed to be, right? Um, not that life always works that way, but I'm here to provide that service. If you're thinking ahead and you know, hey, I'm in a relationship, I want to get pregnant, I want to, you know, assist my, this new soul that's coming in the best way that I possibly can, you're going to take the time to study yourself. You're going to take the time to remove the trauma that you have before you get pregnant, because best believe whoever you are is going to show up in that child. So if you want to change the child after you've had them and you haven't dealt with you, that's going to be a difficult journey. So it's best to try to seek yourself first. And if you know who you are, the checks and regulations on yourself before someone has to, or you have to deal with the child received it naturally. That's incredible. And so, I mean, talk to us about how you actually do that. And so is it primarily one-on-one -on -one work with these couples? Yes, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, whenever I do the intake for any client, the first few things I ask them is, of course, their name, their date of birth, where they were born. That's going to be their blueprint, the time that they were born. That's going to tell me pretty much everything I need to know um, on the shell of who they are so that I know how to move forward with both of them. And it can, you know, and it'll tell me where they benefit one another, where they complement one another, where they may have struggles. And I can work with them one-on-one -on -one to get them first to open up, communicate, speak their truth, which is like the number one rule with divine deliverance clients speak, um, because that allows you to move, remove the trauma. And once they start that dialogue of going back and forth, we start uprooting stuff constantly uprooting, uprooting, you know, why are you overweight, uprooting, an insecurity somewhere, uprooting, um, sexuality, why do I want the lights off in the bedroom, why do I not feel comfortable with my body, uprooting, someone back in the day told me I wasn't attractive, uprooting, uprooting, so we're constantly working on all of these things to get to the truth of who you are, and the highest idea that you have to yourself, and then it becomes a domino effect, it becomes a domino effect in the workplace, in your career, in your relationships, in your life, how you look and act when you walk out of the door. It just gives you your self-esteem and your confidence back. It's not, you know, sexuality and Tantra 
is a 360 thing. It just it does not just deal with sexuality. Tantra is dealing with the 360 of your life in every aspect and element of your life. Um, so when we start to look at who we are from the basics and build up to who we want to be and who we see ourselves in our highest you know, idea of ourselves, that's a journey. That's a journey. Um, and it seems like a difficult task and it's really not. Sometimes it's just asking questions in a safe place to be able to have those conversations. And I think that my services provide that. So tell us one of your client success stories. I mean, like, give us, give us an example of, um, you know, from start to finish, like how you've assisted a couple or, you know, a woman. I mean, just share one with us. Um, I have a lot. One of my favorites is I had two um, clients come. They weren't initially clients. I was doing an intro to Tantra workshop um, and they were there and I happened to pull, they had just met recently. Um, and I pulled them up to just do a exercise with them, a breathing exercise um, in the lotus position, walking back and forth, sinking their breath, becoming one. And out of that, um, this couple happened to go deeper into the relationship. They got more connected using a lot of the tantra practices that they had learned in the workshop. And eventually they got pregnant. Um, and therefore a child came through, you know, from that union. That that's that's probably the number one on my list of client stories. Um, I ran into the gentleman at a photo a print shop, I'm printing up some flyers for another event. He was like, Hey, a Genesis, I've been looking for you. I've got such great story to tell you. You know, after your workshop, I went home and made love to my woman and we got a baby. You know, so for me being a doula and teaching Tantra, like that's that's the highest, you know, um, thank you that I could possibly get that I was a part of a child coming through in love, you know? Absolutely. Um, another would be, I had a client recently who just recently lost her father. Um, she had never really learned how to love or be in relationships. Um, she wasn't very feminine. She, she wasn't settled into her body at all. Um, she hadn't really experienced orgasms and my first session with her, I gave her homework that she had to wear dresses. She had to wear her hair out. She had to get in the mirror and tell herself she loved herself, you know, mirror work um, and dress like a goddess, exude, you know, um, the signs of being a goddess. And one of them, you know, was wearing a dress and being more feminine and just really getting in tune with herself. I'm telling you, a lot of times the homework is very simple. Um, and the next time I saw her, she was just as bright and bubbly and she had makeup on and she was like, I've started my own business, you know, and it was just, just someone saying it's okay. Whatever has happened in the past is okay. It does not define you. That's not where your story ends and tomorrow is a new day. Yeah, I love those two examples because I think, you know, the first one really speaks to, you know, a lot of the work that you do with couples. And so catching that couple, you know, before, you know, the conception, you know, of a child and, you know, working on them individually, helping them connect and then, you know, having the child come through in love. I think that's incredible. And then the second story, you know, being more of an individual story, um, just giving people permission to show up and to release and so I think that's what's so phenomenal about your work and, and how you infuse Tantra and Tantric practices beyond sex um, right. as well. And how you really um, look at Tantra as a lifestyle and really bring that into your work. Um, I think that's great and phenomenal. Thank you. So um, I know that you're someone that uses Tantra to consciously create other aspects of your life. Um, so how do you use Tantra in creating what you want in business. Walk us through how you set your intentions. I would love to, because I think it's very magical and everyone can do it. Um, first of all, sex is one of the most powerful energies on the planet. It creates life and we all have access to it. So even though you're not creating life or bringing forth a child every time you have sex, because it's a creative energy, you are creating something right? There's a spark, there's a current that um, comes about when the male and the female, the yoni and the lingam come together. And it's an opportunity to spark something, to create something, to bring something into this physical world. So 
in that, use that creative energy to bring forth what it is you want. Meaning, when you go into lovemaking, set the intention of how are we going to use this energy? How are we going to use our power and our magic? So if you're wanting to, you know, we'll start small. If you're wanting to um, get a job, right? And you know that this is a good opportunity for you, then I would say set the intention that this is something that you're wanting. This is something that you're claiming. You're asking for the highest, um, what serves you, that serves your highest good to come out of this situation. Have that conversation with your partner, even if it's not your husband or your, you know, your full-time partner, if it's someone that you enjoy having sex with and you know that they have a good heart, share with them what your intention is and say, hey, I would, you know, I would love for you to assist me in me acquiring this. Um, so he may just be simply saying, you know, whatever serves her highest good come to her. You set your mantra, you set your affirmation, you start to repeat that together aloud if you want to, or internally, it can be a quiet thing. Um, but when you go into lovemaking and especially at the height of the orgasm, hold the intention, hold the thought. And if you do this continuously, that creative energy will spill over into this realm, eventually see it start to manifest. So we affirm and we do affirmations all the time. That, that's magic in its own way of repetition. That's what a ritual is, of doing something repeatedly, okay? Speaking is spelling. So you're spelling and you're calling something forth into your energy grid. And so when you do this, it has no choice but to occur. The universe is like a boomerang. What you send out, it has no choice but to come back. So once you know your personal power that you can command that boomerang to come back in a certain way with the words that you speak, now you're in control of your life. You're no longer on default. So when we deal with quartz crystals and when we deal with sex, which are conductors, okay, of energy, then we start to call it forth even stronger. So you're using sex as a conductor. You're using it to assist you in whatever it is that you're wanting to call down. So if it's $5,000 that you want, when you go into lovemaking, concentrate on the $5,000. See money pouring into your purse. See money pouring into your bank account. See you being able to, you know, you're in the, the elements and the visions of what it is you wanting to do with that money, whether it be travel or whether it be purchasing something, whatever it is that you're wanting that money for, don't focus on how it's going to come. That's a blockage. Focus on the outcome and focus on how you visualize yourself utilizing this $5,000 and it will start to come to you. And don't look for it, don't, you know, don't limit it in saying it has to come all at one time. You know, um, it may come $20 at a time, $200 at a time, someone just blessing you, but be in gratitude constantly so that when it does arrive, you'll catch it and you'll realize you did manifest this for yourself. So I utilize sexual energy and Tantra for that. If I have a business meeting, like today, for instance, um, I use my Tantra and I use my astrology for business. So I was doing an interview, right? And I know on Thursday, the, ener the energy for expansion and communication is high. Um, I know the high time of the day is when the sun is up. So we have 12 o'clock. So you have all these tools that you can use to bend things to your will to get the outcome that you want. You know, if your power color... Um, is navy blue, you know, based on once I do your astrological chart and I find that information out, then I can say, hey, Thursday is your day, nine o'clock is your hour, blue is your color. If someone calls you for an interview, line it up in a way that you have as many tools on your side to bring forth the outcome that you want. And this is how we utilize Tantra um, in our everyday lives. I love that you teach people about those tools because I think that so much of um, the manifestation process. Um, a lot of people believe that it's all kind of chance. And really, I mean, while yes, there is a certain um, chance or random element to it, um, maybe in terms of the way that it arrives, um, there are ways that you can set the intentions. There are tools that you can use, whether it's, you know, astrology or it's, um, you know, setting your intentions or, um, you know, sex or, you know, just so many different tools. And so, so many that's- tools. Yeah, like that's incredible. And I love that you use that um, in your work and that you teach it. And so tell us what has been your biggest lesson as an entrepreneur kind of being on this this journey? Oh, my goodness. I'm learning this right now. Um, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm about a year out now of completely 
not being in corporate America. Yay. And as a Virgo, um, stability and security is like a big thing. Um, we're always wanting to make sure we can take care of everything. So sometimes it's a little difficult for us to free up, let go and let go of the fear. So my biggest lesson is trusting in my gifts, is trusting in my power. If I have been able to manifest $20, why couldn't I manifest 20,000? I had to upgrade my operating system, so to speak, my, you know what I mean? And say, you can do this. You can do this. You have the power to do it. I, I have, I am living in my manifestation right now, my home, my car, my children, you know, my puppy, like everything that I had, you know, certain things arrived and collided together to make that occur. But it was me. It was my power. And I have to, I had to get comfortable with owning that. I had to get comfortable with shining. I had to get comfortable with, no, you do live a blissful life. I had to get comfortable with really owning that um, unapologetically. And I think that once I did that, I just soared, you know, the blessings continued to come because I stayed in gratitude. Um, we have now we're human. So we forget sometimes. And, you know, we have those moments that we're like, we, we panic and we think, oh my goodness, what am I going to do in this situation? Or I don't have enough money or whatever the case may be. But if you exercise your intuitive muscle, if you exercise and you stay in your rituals and you stay in your discipline long enough, you will snap yourself back very quickly and say, go to the rituals, go to your mate and have sex. I have the power. I have the power within me to bring forth what I want. Like once you start to live in your power, fear and doubt, they, it doesn't come so often. And when it does, you have a trigger to kick it off really quickly. Um, and you just kind of stay grounded in that gratitude. You stay and, 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 and allow things around you, keep things around you that will tag you back in and say, you've already done it before. You can do it again. Um, and so in my entrepreneurial walk, is really using my rituals, using my days, using um, my affirmations, knowing you know when when to tap into spirit, um, and trusting that, trusting that, fasting, you know, staying in who I am, you know, trusting in who I am, and knowing you know for almost forty years I've been doing this, and I've been doing it flawlessly almost, you know, and um, getting comfortable with who I am and just accepting, accepting my gift, accepting my blessings and knowing I couldn't be anyone else and I couldn't be doing anything other than what I'm doing. This is who I am. I, it has not strayed from this. I haven't woken up and said, I'm going to be an attorney today. I'm going to be an astronaut tomorrow. I'm going to be a teacher next month. Like I have been consistent in who I am and what I wanted to do. And I think that that is a huge blessing to know my purpose at such a young age and be able to follow that path. Um, so the key is finding what you love, finding what you're good at, finding what people respond to, and then creating a team. You know, very early on, I did everything on my own. Um, I thought that no one's going to want to help me or no one believe in my vision the way I do. But along the way, when you start to find people who admire your work and who look up to what you do and have been touched by your life, then you can create a team to assist you. Um, and it has to be people who, who love you and believe in, in the power that you have and also believe in the power that they have. And once you do that and once you create that matrix around you, there's nothing that you can do. Oh, yes. I'm so glad, um, especially that you talked about that last piece of the team aspect and, you know, really believing that you have the ability to attract the people that will support your vision and that likewise, mm -hmm. you know, you have the ability to support them. It's definitely something that I've actually been experiencing in my business as well as we continue to grow and kind of putting that team together. Um, it just creates a whole different level of energy to the work. Um, and I believe that it raises the quality of the work as well. So that's phenomenal. And so tell us What's next for you? Um, tell us about any retreats you have coming up, any coaching programs. Um, I would love for you to work with me. Um, it is my brainstorming season. And so my goddess coaching sessions um, by webinars will be starting back up after the equinox. So from November to February, uh, we have a goddess coaching session that's coming up. You can find all that information out on my website, divinedeliverance.net. Uh, and then March, we'll have our yearly retreat. I'm working on the location for that, but it will be Caribbean. Um, so I welcome anyone who wants to suggest um, where we could possibly do it. I'm looking at Costa Rica, Panama, 
Uh, I'm going to Jamaica next month to just kind of look around. So I'm feeling out what the location will be, but it will definitely be March, 2016. Fantastic. So, Love yeah. it. Well, thank you for coming on my show, sis. I appreciate your work, your spirit, your love. I truly value you and respect your work. So thank you again. I appreciate you as well. And I value our friendship and relationship and the opportunities and the doors that you opened up for me early on in us meeting. So I am grateful um, for you as well. And I love you. You're welcome. And thank you everyone for listening. You can subscribe to the Ariel Lauren show on iTunes, Android platforms, and YouTube. Just follow the links on ariellauren.com. But don't click off this episode just yet. I always like to give a free gift, discount, or special offer away for every episode. So hold on for a few seconds. Are you ready for a sensual reading experience like no other? Corset Magazine is the go-to magazine for all things sexuality. We embrace curiosity. We honor sensuality. We celebrate sex. Learn about everything from orgasms and sex toys to kink and BDSM. Each of our issues are packed with real-life sex stories, stunning photography, and beautiful artwork. You can download each issue to your computer, iPad, Kindle, or tablet device. Just go to corsetmagazine.com to download your issue, corsetmagazine.com.